Hey guys, welcome back to Mulberry Bridge Farm. It's Ashley here with you again, and today I almost don't even know where to start. It's hot already. I've been out in the barn at 4 a.m. this morning. I've been in the barn all morning. The vet has been called. And usually with me, you know, if the vet has been called, there's something really wrong. So um, just stick, stick with us, guys. This all started last night. It does not end by the end of this episode. There will be a part two. I just hope it's a happy ending and not a sad ending. So here we go. Gumpy, you okay, Gunther? Oh guys, I don't know. I think Gunther's too hot. Okay. <laughs> okay guys, I'm actually really worried. I think Gunther's overheating. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and shear what I can get off of him as much as I can get off of him and then I'm gonna get a bucket of water and just toss it well and just toss it on him he's not wanting to get up it is really hot guys it's really hot and we've already sheared him once um, his hair's growing back really fast so I've got to cool him down he was down I Joe came out and did the morning chores but she doesn't know to look for him and I've never told her to look for him and make sure he's okay so um, I'm actually gonna go get the water out of my water trough because the water that comes out of our well is ice cold and I don't want to shock him he's already acting pretty terrible sorry guys um, Mark Gunther's overheating really bad He's overheating bad. I've uh, already started shearing him. I'm, I've dumped water on him. I'm getting more water for him. Um, would you get me wet towels? I don't care if they're dirty or clean, just wet them. Thank you. So we're gonna just try to get him under control because I need my livestock guardian. He's important and we love him to boot. So. And we got storms coming in. So of course now it's gotten so hot and humid out here and he's succumbed to basically heat exhaustion that there is now a huge thunderstorm system that's coming through our area and uh, we were actually able to cool him off. I dumped water on him like you guys saw. I sheared him as much as I could. My big shears are out of order obviously so I guess I need to get them to a shop and we've got um, just wet towels with lukewarm to cold water on him to cool his body temperature down slowly. And I just gave him Jump Start, which is just a lot of um, nutrients and vitamins to help him kind of pick up. And he got um, bounce back in his water and it's cold water he's drinking. So we're just, I guess we're gonna get a fan up on him and monitor him. We've got a uh, towel over here. We're getting ready to strap a fan on the other side. But it's just gotten so hot and now with all that buildup, it's finally storming. It cooled down a lot outside, but it's just too much for him. So at least he's drinking water right now and keep you guys posted. I swear it's never a dull moment, like ever. So for camelids, really every year, especially in this area, we usually shear them once. And I sheared him close-ish, close but probably not as close as I should have. So. I'm gonna take my big shears in and get them serviced so that I can make sure I get him down to the skin. That's why you guys saw me taking um, the fur around his belly first to cool down camelids quickly because they cush. You can always have um, kitty pools full of water. So I guess for him now, that's what I'm going to do. I've just never seen him get this hot. 
he usually comes up and I hose him off two or three times a week and I just came out and he looked like a, a melted puddle of llama and that was it's just really scary especially because he's really alert all the time he doesn't really like to be handled he sees a halter coming and he runs um, this time geez, this time he didn't run he was completely fine with me approaching him and putting his halter on um, He's got some tremors and usually it'll, it'll show in their feet first when they've got heat exhaustion like that. Their legs will get really stiff. Um, so I'm just going to watch him. I know he was already dewormed. I mean, other than that, he's up to date on everything. So we're just going to stay out here and keep an eye on him, get another fan on him. Um, I put buckets of water over him because we just need to bring his core body temperature down. And like I said, never ice cold. It'll shock their system and do more harm than good. So I just got as much hair as I could or as much as he would tolerate and got some some water on him. He's got cold water in front of him now. I might try to help him nudge up because like he's pretty sprawled out. Um, he's, he doesn't look like he's in a natural cushing position. So here in a little bit I might push him a little bit to kind of move out of that area but for right now. And he didn't want the um, jump start paste that I gave to him in the tube. He fought which I'd rather see him fight any day that's a good sign rather than him just laying there not really caring it's when they don't fight that it scares me so Let's get out. we're gonna get out of here for a second and just back off and let him have some time to really recoup without us being an audience decided to quiet down enough for me to talk to you guys um, it absolutely is 100% my fault for not if your llama or camelid goes down in heat or they even act a little bit stressed or depressed or they're just a little lethargic start treating them for heat stress because I'm learning the hard way he's been a little bit sluggish the last couple days and I just figured it was just because it was hot not because he was going to succumb to heat stress and that we would be rushing to cool him down so he seems to be doing better but we're just gonna have to keep our eyes on him and make it a touch and go but he's at least alert and drinking water but just if your camelids or any of your animals are starting to act lethargic go off feed aren't moving around as much if it's hot just cool them down just take the, per the proper precautions and keep them cool We've been doing ice in the water, um, trying to keep things cool for them, fans, all that, but I guess for Gunther here, it just wasn't enough. I really feel like I'm going to invest in a kiddie pool for him and put it up by the, um, the water trough. The rain, guys, it won't stop. Has it rained in like five days? Well, he wanted feed, that's a good sign. Usually if they're depressed or too hot, they won't eat at all. So for now, I think we've got him under control. He's calmed down a little bit where I was actually able to get the towel back underneath of him. Whereas before I was just putting the water around him. Cause guys, even though he's down, he can still kick me. He can still hurt me. And an injury to myself will distract me from what I'm trying to do with him because I'll be worried about my own injury. So that's why we only did the water to pool underneath of him. Now he has made his own mud shallows around our, our property, but I think he's just too hot today to get to him. And with no rain, I'm pretty sure they are probably dry. So I'm just gonna keep a kiddie pool up front for him from now on and keep an eye on him. So for right now, he's eating, he drank. I've sheared him even more in more areas so that that fan right there, he'll be able to feel it all over. So that was a rough one. <laughs> I am hoping that we can definitely pull him out of this. He doesn't seem to be as bad. He's starting to want to get up. 
So I'll be back out here in a couple hours to monitor him. But until then, guys, I think that's going to do it for us. So I know I've already done a video on how to keep your livestock cool. And we practice all of that. That's why we made a video about it. Is that's our common practices here. But this time, it just wasn't enough for Mr. Gunther. So in that event, make sure you have your vet on call. Make sure you kind of have an action plan. Think ahead that if it were to happen to your livestock, what would you do? What should be the first thing that you do? Should you cool them down? Should you shear them? Should you give them probiotic? Obviously you want to cool them down, but don't do icy water. It shocks animals when you do that. So that's my two cents today, guys. I feel exhausted, but he is looking better, well enough for me to want to go inside and eat dinner and then come back out and check on them. So I'm gonna to try to catch my breath because it's been crazy. It has been crazy. But until next time, guys, thanks for being here with me. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you weren't as scared and frustrated as I was during this, but I hope that you may learn from my mistakes and that this sheds a little bit of light on some things that you might be able to do to help your livestock if they go down due to heat stress. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for being here with me. Um, stay healthy and be kind out there. Make sure your livestock are cool. Until next time, bye.